Proficient writing is a foundation for academic success and achievement within the curriculum, and it is considered one of the most important goals within education. With endless resources and information readily available, it is surprising to believe a substantial number of children are unable to accomplish this basic goal. And with this failure, more children are facing detrimental effects involving their self-esteem, confidence, attitude and motivation towards writing. Without the fundamental skills of writing, individuals are less severely disadvantaged regarding their quality of life, employability and earning capacity. So what is involved in writing and how is it so complex? Writing is comprised of multiple skills, cognitive, linguistic and psychomotor processes. The coordination of these processes make written language extremely complex. The simple view of writing considers the creation of text into two elements. On one hand, writing text involves lower order transcription skills such as handwriting, spelling and punctuation. On the other hand, there are higher order self-regulated thinking processes which involve planning, sequencing and expressing content. Sadala agrees that poor writers generally struggle at these two levels. Learned helplessness can be developed and this causes effective consequences. Less competent writers begin to believe the task of writing is difficult and unrewarding, which results in minimal work output and less time spent practicing. The lack of practice results in a child not improving and this sets off the cycle of failure. According to the Australian National School English Literacy Survey, 27% of students in Year 3 and 29% of students in Year 5 did not reach the national standards for writing. In this study, male ESL lower socioeconomic background students and Indigenous students were overrepresented in the lowest achievement group. So how do we teach writing and close the gap? Traditionally, there have been two different approaches to teaching writing, the first one being the skills-based approach. This program is structured and has direct teaching of essential skills and concepts. Through topics that are selected by the teacher or within a textbook, students' writing ability is developed. In addition, aspects of grammar, punctuation, spelling and sentence structure is practiced. The issues of this approach is that it produces very little motivation for students and doesn't provide many opportunities to freely write. It is believed that when students are given opportunities to freely write on topics of their choice, the writing task becomes more motivating and authentic. More recently, the process approach to writing was developed as it provides a more student-centered approach. The process of writing is made very explicit to students and involves numerous stages of pre-writing, writing, reviewing and editing. Alongside this process, strategic planning can be implemented. Cognitive and self-regulating strategy instruction involve using sequences that students follow to ensure they make their way through the various stages. Using a strategic approach has shown positive effects within a student's quality of writing and sophistication. An example of this is the five-step writing process power. Both formal and informal assessments should be used to determine the learning difficulty or possible disability. These screening measures may include accurate legible letter writing, which can be assessed in the process assessment of the learner, spelling, which can be assessed in the Gentry Spelling Grade Level Placement Test, primary traits, which can be assessed by looking at the different elements within the writing process, or curriculum-based measures that assess academic skill and target instruction. CBM administration may involve writing props and timed periods of writing. Through these diagnostic tests, a teacher can determine the course of action that may need to be taken. The Disability Discrimination Act and the Disability Standards for Education state that all students have the right to the same education and training. To achieve this, teachers may use the response to intervention approach. RTI is an early intervention approach to provide differentiation of instruction before a student falters and gets left behind. It is a three-tiered approach that is used alongside of layered instruction, progress monitoring and ongoing assessment. All students begin in tier one and it is the least intensive of the three tiers. It is used alongside of general instruction. Tier 2 has a focus for students who are struggling with a particular writing skill or process. Tutoring sessions occur more regularly than Tier 1 for longer durations. Tier 3 involves intensive instruction and is usually one-on-one -on -one and highly individualised. Multiple tutorial sessions are provided often with specialised staff. Students in Tier 3 have been found to benefit from handwriting instruction programs, 
computer-assisted instruction and strategic instruction. Now to clarify, the nature of instruction is the same between tiers 1, 2 and 3. However, the difference is the intensity of the instruction provided. If students are not responsive to tier 3, it generally indicates that they may be candidates for special education. Now, as teachers, it's our duty to set up students for success. In the writing task, we can do this by building self-esteem and confidence through simplified tasks, supporting and guiding our students, providing explicit teaching of spelling and writing concepts, and using the three-tier response to intervention. Now it's your turn to go out there and set up your students for success.